Now that you've done it once, what's the challenge of taking a team into Foxborough and trying to, you know, deal with all the, the tradition and history that's there and keeping your team focused? Well, obviously the tradition and history is not going to, you know, win or lose the game for anybody. I think we all know where the banners are, uh, the success that that organization has had over, um, you know, the last 20 years. But I think that uh, what will, you know, win or, or lose the game is, is playing sound, fundamental football, taking care of the football, penalties, you know, playing with great technique. That's um, that's really what they've done. It's been impressive the last five weeks. Mike, what do you think has made Mac Jones such an effective quarterback so early um, in his career? Well, I mean, I think that they, um, you know, he's well coached. I think he's talented. I think he's um, really got a great grasp of their offense. They've been able to run the football. Um, playing on short fields lately, you know, not taking a ton of chances. I mean, I think when it's there down the field, he's you know been accurate, you know. But they've just been playing very complimentary. Uh, the play action game uh, set up very well. Uh, protection has been, you know, what you would expect it to be. And um, you know, I think that that's that's really what the what the product is from what I've seen. Can it be harder to get into and stay in a rhythm with running backs in the running game when there's three guys dividing the carries evenly as opposed to one guy having the lion's share? I've never played running back. I don't know. Um, you know, all we can do is be ready to go when, when our number's called. Um, you know, that, that's the situation that, that we're in. And, you know, I'm sure we could look around the league and, and see the, the teams and, and the different scenarios that, that run the football with, with other guys. I, you know, Tampa Bay ran it for 120. I'm sure that they ran four net. Sure that they ran Ronald Jones, um, so you know, hopefully we can we can block when we call the runs, and that the, whoever the running back is in the game can can execute it and, and make good cuts and, and break a few tackles and take care of the ball. Patriots defense had a bunch of opt outs last year, but they're obviously playing really well at this point. What kind of makes that difficult to game plan for? What do they do so well? The opt outs? No, the players that are playing for them now. Oh, I mean they're good players, so. Um, they're they're very good uh, up front with technique, the technique in which they play. The linebackers are are physical. The guys on the edge, you know, whether that's Judon Van Noy, um, you know, Collins when he was in there, you know, they they ask him to rush, they ask him to to cover and, and set the edge. So um, secondary is is physical, reroute players and. You know, they're taking advantage of overthrows. They're taking advantage of mistakes by, by the opposing offenses. How do you make the timing work this week with the guys in on, on game planning day? How do you make the game planning timing work? Uh, today will be first and second down. Uh, tomorrow will be first, second, and third. Friday will be third down and then move the field. What did you guys do all of that? Were you, you had a long night last night? I mean, I think we kind of knew what the schedule was going to be. Thanksgiving has been on the calendar for a while, so I did my best to, to let everybody know what the schedule was going to be, and uh, it's kind of how we went with it. You've seen, I mean, Nick Westbrook team his success grow, I mean, confidence grow, and, and how has the confidence in him kind of grown along the way? Sure. I mean, we've always had confidence in Nick. I think he's, um, you know, developed. I think he, you know, when you catch a lot of footballs, which which he does, and in, going in towards the middle of the field, that has a, there's a lot of trust there that the quarterback is is going to put the ball where it needs to be, that he's going to catch it, and there's usually going to be contact, you know, after that. So that's something that Nick has has done a nice job with. He, he blocks for us. He plays on special teams. He knows multiple positions. So those those types of players are very valuable uh, to to a team, and um, you know I think. Again, he probably built some of that confidence, Jim, on, on special teams. And you know, I can remember, you know, in training camp, uh, doing a competitive period where, you know, you kind of the whole team's around there and it's the, the gunner versus, you know, two guys holding right. You remember that? And two guys holding them up. And, and Nick, you know, some of you guys are shaking your head that you remember Nick, you know, winning that, that rep in front of everybody. And I think that the, that kind of started it. But, but we've mentioned this before where guys, you know, start to, to build some confidence in this league as a young player on, on special teams. What can Des do maybe in a week if he knows he's got more of a role as, as opposed to stepping in as a in relief? What can Des do? Des can just be ready to, 
to go. Be ready, be prepared, you know, for, for multiple coverages, be be prepared and practice for for contact uh, down the field, be ready to to block when he's supposed to block. Uh, same thing we'd ask everybody to be ready to do. Earlier in the season after a game where the offense had a few turnovers, I remember you, you dedicated a period of practice to sort of working through those things and emphasizing that. Do you do anything similar this week? Well, we've, we've always, you know, there will always be, you know, whether we take care of it or not, we're always doing it, you know, every day. Uh, it was the, the additional time. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that, you know, tomorrow we'll have, you know, some, some more time allotted uh, to those things. And, um, but that's not um, something that we just do as a, as a reaction, Luke. We're doing it every day. It was just that that, uh, that particular week we, we probably added, you know, <laughs> eight to ten more minutes of it. Which is Hollister's experience factor into, into bringing him back. And, you know, does, does he take much – does he need much tuning up if he was to be called upon or you know, how, do, how do things – Well, work? we've had Cody, you know, with us for a while. We've always liked his versatility. You know his toughness, his ability to play on special teams, his ability to uh, to learn multiple positions. You know, very similar to Nick in their in their play strength and their size. And um, he, he's always been, you know, watching him uh, compete on the practice squad and in the show team. Excuse me. Um, you know, it just was that he wasn't ready to go up until this point. Dontrell Hilliard show you in the last game to kind of inspire more confidence from you guys in him. Yeah, you know, speed and I mean, hit it, hit it uh, the runs he hit with a burst and you know was able to function in there in a very you know uncomfortable setting of you know all of a sudden he's he's learning the third down he's learning the two minute and then now you know the second half turns into somewhat of a of a two minute game and um, you know, he handled that and he jumped in there and um, returned kicks for us too so um, you know we'll keep working with Dontrell. Some of the guys they go to like outside wellness shops or recovery shops. How do you approach that? Like, is that something that you welcome for them to, you know, take that extra effort to, especially in the midst of all the injuries you guys are dealing with? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll say this. I, I'm I'm open uh, to to doing whatever is is going to make our players feel better. I really am. I believe. Uh, I have the utmost confidence in what we're doing here and our staff. Um, I tell that to the players. Um, we ask that um, you know they kind of let us know who who they go to, because <clears throat> if they're that good, then we should hire them. You know, we sh they should be they should be here helping the rest of them. So um, we we are aware of of all those most of them. I would say um, commu communication with Todd. Uh, myself, Frank, uh, John, but it's real. You know, what I mean, it's just like everybody's got a trainer now. Everybody's got somebody that that tra yeah, they have all got them. And so, you know, it, it's um, it's just kind of part of what the the life of the NFL is with the different seasons and the people that they they feel comfortable with in the off season. Uh, we share with them their right to a second medical opinion. I mean, I've been through all this as a player, so you know, it's not like it's new uh, for me. But we just ask that there's a line of communication so that if uh, we're doing a treatment, that maybe there's not some sort of treatment that uh, you know, would, would, would be in, in any way negative you know, or counterproductive uh, to, to what we were doing. So that's kind of how, how we handle that. That focus on, on recovery, is that something that has really evolved since your days of being in that same position where you need to you know, do things to be able to get on the field consistently? Well, I mean, I think just technology and, and science has um, changed, you know, so much. You know, there wasn't there wasn't PRP, you know, injections and things that helped heal muscle or, or any of the other things. So um, that's certainly something that's that's new. Um, there's a lot of things that have changed since since I played. Do you appreciate you know guys like Ben and, and Roger who were, you know, probably less than. You know, obviously less than 100%, but there's still a lot. <clears throat> there's a lot of those guys, John. So I would hate to to stop the list at, at Roger and Ben, but, you know, I think that those guys being north of 30 and the position that they play, you know, those are two good guys to start with, but very conscious of, of the rest of the guys as well, you know, that, that are doing it uh, and that are far less than 100%. 
let the old curmudgeons uh, earn a little bit more credit uh, because of their age, like, like you said? Do the old guys get a What's little curmudgeon? bit? What's <laughs> yes. curmudgeon? That's what me and Koharski are often called, curmudgeons. Don't, don't reference Koharski. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, is that like old? A grumpy yeah. old man. Yeah, grumpy old man. Well, then, yeah, you can say it. <laughs> um, we're just trying to do whatever we can do to get, get these guys ready to go uh, each and every Sunday, look at the, the, how they feel, talk to them, see what the practice schedule should look like, and uh, treatment and, and recovery, you know, lifting. You know, those guys all and, and everybody does, it, does a great job of, of trying to get, get right every week. Your no excuses, next man up kind of approach come from your days in New England and what you kind of learned playing under. There's a lot of things yeah. that, that we do that I do on a personal basis, on a coaching basis. Um, you know, how I try to help, you know, Tyler or Carter. You know, I learned a lot, <clears throat> you know, in eight years there, whether that be from, from Bill, assistant coaches, uh, Mr. Kraft, uh, the players. You know, learned a lot from the, from the players that, that we um, – you know, teammates. So, you know, again, you have good experiences throughout life, and you try to take some of those things with you as you as you move on. You mentioned the confidence that Nick gained by playing special team. You've talked about Monty Rice with that too. For someone like Dylan Radens, who isn't going to be you know running down covering kicks, I'm curious: is there any kind of equivalent chance to get that confidence, or, or I guess impress? Yeah, or an improve. You know, and that's uh, you know I think Luke. <clears throat> you know, that's, that's a great question, and that's something that I've been trying to figure out is some of these younger guys up front, you know, on both sides of the ball, is how you can get them to improve. You know, real details only go so far with, with somebody up front. you got to put pads on, and you have to go out and, and practice and compete and, um, and, and do those things. And so, you know, we've been trying to add, you know, some periods, you know, maybe on a Thursday – based on how guys feel, based on who's available, to get some of that speed work in with pads, um, just to sprinkle it in there to give some of those guys uh, opportunities to, to improve during practice, especially you know, as we move here towards the, the, the back part of the season. Or is that for a guy like, <coughs> like Radens who... You, you know, said this would be quick, Robbie. I thought it would be. I thought we covered a lot around yesterday. We haven't seen you in a long time, you know. Uh, um, a guy like Radens, who obviously you know was, was a standout player in college and so forth, a high draft pick. You know, how much, how difficult maybe is that, kind of mentally, you know, not to be playing too much in his rookie year, but to, but to stay up and to stay. Well, I'm not going to come on and how difficult it is. I think that would be something that Dylan, um, you know, could best address. Uh, all I know is that there's a willingness to learn. I see him in here a lot. I see him in here often. I see him here working out. I see him in here studying. When he has had the opportunities, I see a see a level of, of effort and finish and competitiveness. Just needs to continue to improve and you know and get better. Mike, what's the challenge? Eleven games in of trying to make those uh, corrections on on mistakes from this last game, balancing the fact that you've got some banged up guys on this team. Is it kind of uh, at this point a lot of mental work on the players to to make those kind of corrections? Yeah, we'll have to have great focus, you know, as we prepare here the next couple of days and. See how we feel on, on, you know, today. Let's focus on today and see what today looks like. Start to get the keys and, and start to understand who this opponent is and, and what they've done so well.